This video is to help us understand the Simulating Confidence Intervals applet, which is part of Exploration 3.4b. Be sure to have your textbook open to pages 190 and 191, where we will go through Exploration 3.4b in the Simulating Confidence Intervals applet. The larger picture of this applet is to understand what confidence level means, or when we say we are 95% confident in an interval, where does that confidence level come from? Advanced applets, go to Simulating Confidence Intervals under Other Applets so we can explore the meaning of confidence. Proportions, binomial, and walled should already be set up. We're going to use 0.5 as our parameter value and set our sample size to 80. We'll first collect one sample to see what the applet is doing. In this first sample we collected, our p hat value was 0.588, and you can see the number of successes and the number of failures plotted under most recent sample. Sample statistics, or midpoints, is plotted just below that. This green square correlates to the 0.588, the sample proportion, in this most recent sample. Finally, on the left-hand side, we are plotting a 95% confidence interval for this sample. So the midpoint or center is at 0.588, and our two endpoints were calculated using the formula that you guys learned in section 3.2. Those two endpoints were found to be 0 0.480 and 0.695. We can collect another sample, and note we get a new sample proportion, 0.537, and a new interval of 0.428 to 0.647. What we really want to know is what happens in the long run. So let's start with just creating 100 samples, or I should say, gathering 100 different samples. Here we have our most recent samples plotted. In our most recent sample, we had a proportion of 0.512. Our plot now, instead of looking at only one sample at a time, has the statistics from each of those 100 samples I just gathered, or the p-hat value from each of them. You can actually click on these green squares to see the proportion or to see the sample associated with each p-hat. You'll also note on the left hand side as I click around on my different sample proportions I find the intervals associated with them. Let's make this look a little bit nicer by sorting the left hand plot. Now it's sorted from the smallest or lowest confidence interval to the highest. Note, you can also click on the confidence intervals. And if I click on this lowest confidence interval, I see it's associated with the lowest p-hat value, a p-hat of 0.362. If I click on my highest confidence interval, it's associated with my highest p-hat value, 0.650. Now, to understand the meaning of confidence, we need to think about the green and the red. What separates the green confidence intervals from the red ones? Have you spotted it? It's this vertical line, and whether the vertical line is contained in the confidence interval or not. So our vertical line, we are told, is at 0.5. Where did the 0.5 come from? It came from our parameter value. So this is one of those rare situations where we are pretending we actually know the parameter to investigate a long run property. What does confidence mean? So if I look at each of the red intervals, the red endpoints do not contain 0.5 in them on either end of my spectrum. Whereas each of my green intervals, 0.5 is contained in the interval. We can calculate the proportion of intervals that contain our parameter using this running total or intervals containing pi, which we also call the capture rate. What do you notice about this capture rate? Well, it's actually really close to the confidence level. Let's see what happens if I change this to 90%. Notice my interval midpoints did not change because my sample statistics did not change, but the intervals got narrower, which we know should happen with less confidence. The percent of intervals containing pi also changed to now be only 89%. Again, really close to our confidence level. 
we'll see this change again if we bump up to 99%. Now our intervals containing pi are exactly our confidence level. If I created more intervals, the capture rate and the confidence level would become even closer for all confidence levels. What does this tell you? Well, it tells us the meaning of confidence. So when we say we're 95% confident in the interval, that means if we took 100 random samples, about 95% of those samples would contain pi, or the parameter, in their interval. It has nothing to do with our individual, with one sample. The meaning of confidence is a long run property. What proportion of samples of the same size would actually contain the parameter if you were to repeatedly sample?